Hello everybody. So 18 months ago or so, I made a video about why I was ditching full frame cameras. And uh, while I stand by those reasons, it wasn't the best video that I've ever made. In fact, it was probably the worst video I've ever made. And, and unfortunately for me, it's, it's got more views than any other video I've I've ever made. Still, fast forward a year and a half and I'm absolutely loving using my Panasonic Lumix G9 which replaced the full frame setup that I had at that time. Now in the year and a half that I've been using this camera, uh, it's picked up lots of battle scars and I've shot with it all over the world and I've loved it so much that I've since become a Lumix ambassador which means that this video along with many others of mine uh, are sponsored by Lumix which enables me to go to great places to make content such as the Faroe Islands where I was a couple of days ago, a new video from there coming soon. Two actually. But one of the other great things about being an ambassador is that Lumix send me some of their new kit to test and uh, most recently they sent me, yeah, this, the uh, the Lumix S1R, which I've been testing for a few weeks and uh, well, I absolutely love. And ever since this turned up at my door, people have been asking me if, uh, if I'm gonna be switching to this from the G9 and from Micro Four Thirds. In other words, doing like a, a full circle. And I've been wondering myself, to be honest, whether, whether or not that will be the case. It won't be, no, no it won't. That's for a number of reasons, which I will talk about now, but if you've got to run, if you've, not got much time. It boils down to this. Photography, and in particular photography gear, all boils down to compromise. Now sometimes the compromise is cost, sometimes it's weight, uh, sometimes it's other stuff, but there is always compromise when you're picking photography gear. And if there wasn't, we'd all be walking around with $30,000 medium format cameras. And uh, in this case, I have decided that for my personal needs, the G9 is a much better fit than this. S1R. So how have I come to this decision? Well, to be honest, it, it wasn't a particularly difficult one to make. So here is my camera bag, or one of my camera bags that I use uh, when I go to places to make videos and, and photos. And as you can see, it's, um, well, it's pretty full. <laughs> so I've got a drone, two camera bodies, lots and lots of lenses. In fact, the camera bodies aren't even in here at the moment because the G9's down there and I'm shooting on the other one that I use for video. So when everything is in this bag, um, it's absolutely rammed, but I need it all. So because I make photography videos, typically a lot of the time I'm filming when I have my camera in my hand, so I need two cameras. And also because I make both videos and photos, I need a wide range of lenses and focal lengths catered for. And as I say, pretty much everything in this bag is used pretty much every time I go out. Apart from actually, Apart from this, um, uh, it's an 85 mil equivalent, and it's a fantastic lens. I just don't don't particularly use it that much. But I mean, it weighs about as much as a packet of crisps, so naturally, it it never comes out of my bag. Speaking of which, crisps. Now, given that I need all of that gear uh, in a bag like that, which of course doesn't include uh, any extra clothing I need, tents and stuff if ever I'm camping. Given that I need all that stuff, that's that's about as much as I'm willing to carry, and it's just not possible to do that kind of thing with a full frame setup. Now, I mean, admittedly, this is far from uh, the lightest or smallest full frame camera on the market, but the fact is, whenever you have full frame lenses, particularly tellies and wides, I mean, they're just gonna be bigger than micro four thirds ones. And I mean, even primes, so this is a 25 millimeter uh, F1.4 micro four thirds lens, so 50 mil equivalent. And this is the 50 mil 1.4 for the S1R. And um, I mean, now clearly there are differences in quality, optical quality between these two. This is gonna be superior. It also can achieve shallower depth of field than this. But I mean, look at the difference in size. Now, elephant in the room, the sensor in this camera blows the sensor in the G9 completely out of the water, as expected, to be honest, given that it's four times the size. But I mean, resolution, dynamic range, even low light performance, despite the fact that this has 47 megapixels, I mean, it's all just better 
than what the G9 offers. However, in my 18 months using the G9, I've never been left wanting for any of those things. I very rarely want more than 20 megapixels, and if I do, I just use the high res mode and a tripod, sadly. Uh, if I want more dynamic range, I just bracket, and as for low light, well, I don't really shoot all that much in low light, so uh, the low light performance or, or constraints of Micro Four Thirds don't really affect me all that much. Now, clearly, all those things are workarounds that might not work for other people's photography, but remember what I said about compromise and everyone having to make compromise. The things that I've just talked about with this those are my compromises. And my compromise with this would be probably that I wouldn't end up being able to take two bodies with me. Either that, or I'd have less lenses that I could take with me, which might have implications. Say for example, if, um, if I was filming something at a particular focal length, but I also wanted to shoot stills at the same focal length at the same time, how would I do that? That's very easy to do with Micro Four Thirds because I've got different lenses that cater for the same focal length. And it's considerations like that that I have to think about. But for the time being at least, the compromises I'd have to make with this, um, i.e. what I could carry in my bag, they are bigger than the compromises that I have to make with the G9 because, well, the compromises with the G9, well, they don't really affect me. So, um, in a way, they're not really, not really huge compromises. But none of that, none of that at all, means that this isn't a phenomenal camera. In fact, this is a better camera than the G9 by pretty much every measure that there is. Now they've both got superb ergonomics, uh, they've both got incredible EVFs, I still kind of, I'm baffled every time somebody says they don't like the idea of an EVF and they want to stick with DSLRs. I get the impression that most of the time those are people that tried EVFs like three or four years ago and, and got turned off them. Now they're just unbelievable and I never know who who wouldn't want the kind of data that comes up on the screen and the the, uh, the immediate exposure changes, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I don't get that, but incredible EVF. Uh, the stabilization, now I was concerned about the stabilization in this because after all the sensor is much, much bigger. So how they were gonna make it as good as in the G9, I wasn't too sure. They've managed it though, and it's unbelievable. I don't quite know how they've done it, but I think in the not too distant future, we'll be looking at a world without tripods, which if you know me, you'll know that I find that very exciting. That said, I do still have to use tripods for video, sadly, which a few of you have pointed out, it's, it's annoying. Um, and image quality. Image quality is, as I've said, just, well, it blows this out of the water, to be honest, when you're comparing them side by side, so very impressive. But if it's not for me, well, who is it for? Um, well, people who uh, probably shoot in low light much more than I do. Maybe people who want absolutely razor thin depth of field. People who value image quality above absolutely everything else. And of course, people who want and need tons and tons and tons of resolution. So lots of people basically I think would favor this over the G9 and Micro Four Thirds gear. I imagine I'm probably in a minority. Um, but yeah, studio photographers, all kinds of commercial photographers, landscape photographers, I would imagine, will uh, look at something like this as, um, as a real impressive piece of kit that I think many of them would favour over, over this. And I love it too, I absolutely love it, I really do. Just not as much as my, my G9. I don't have to keep picking that up every time I show you, I know that, but there we go. So yeah, that, in a nutshell, is why I won't be switching back to full frame and to the S. One R. Thank you very much for watching. Oh, top tip before you go. I um, I typically in my photography bag stick a load of um, stick a load of those silica. What do you call them? The things that come in all kinds of Amazon packages to keep stuff dry. Yeah, I usually keep loads of those. Let me see if I can find one. Loads of these just sort of dotted around my bag in case moisture gets in. Um, quick top tip: make sure you don't put them anywhere where they can easily break or uh, or be ripped because they get into lenses. They get into your crisps. It's not good. Oh, and finally, actually, before you do go, has anybody got any experience with bonsai trees? Because mine is looking very worse for wear. I don't think I've been watering it enough. I also don't have it in direct sun, which is, I thought, one of the main things. But yeah. other than watering it, is there anything else that I should, should be doing to keep it alive? Because it's it's not in a good place. Thanks for watching.